So today on the bench we have this Ryobi P747 inflator and I did get this inflator broken and we see that it has been gone into um, the little tamper evident label here has been broken into so we know that somebody's been inside I don't know exactly what this one is doing yet but it said it had an error so I was hoping we have a board repair in this video it's been a while since so I've done a board repair but no error yet let's see um the actual fan and that part that part works fine go to the mode for tire inflate yeah we can set our pressure oh that's working not really building much pressure one thing I like about this model is it sh shows you here to like inflate balls and toys, floats, etc. You could um, just hold the start stop. Just hold it, release it. You don't have to set like a pressure to build and it runs the pump. But we are not building pressure so let's put this gauge on here and see if it's showing anything. I just want to take a minute here to show that I had to get a quarter inch by one eight inch NPT adapter to make this work with the gauge and the fitting that I already had. So I stopped by Lowe's and it just happened to be Father's Day and I had to buy this fitting. I think it was $5.03 or either $5.08, just over $5. Anyway, I thought it was neat that the lady come up to me and said, are you a father? And I said, yes, I am. And she said, well, here, happy Father's Day. And they actually gave me a $5 gift card. So whether they meant to or not, Lowe's actually helped this video, so I just do want to say I appreciate it. Here's the card. I bought a solar light, and the adapter was free, so so I do appreciate that. Just wanted to mention that. The little things do matter. So one thing I don't like about this model is is the way that the the end is on the hose. This is the older version, the way it just clamps on instead of screws on, and I just do like that better. Yeah, we're not even building up to maybe five or six PSI on the gauge and really not showing very much on the digital display at all, which I don't think that's the whole problem. I'm going to bring over my older P731 model and just show you how quick it builds with a closed system with a gauge like this. It's probably going to shoot up pretty quick here. Oh yeah, even at 10 pounds it shot up delayed. Of course, I don't have a perfect seal here with my fittings, but it doesn't need to be. Just showing here that it built pressure extremely fast. So let's go ahead and take the screws out. You see what's going on with this. I have a feeling it's going to be very hard to get parts for this. So I was hoping this was going to be more of an electronics repair. So the seller on eBay didn't quite have this listing correct. It said it had an error, so I was hoping it was a sensor error, a board issue, maybe a power issue. If I knew it wasn't building pressure, I probably wouldn't have bought it because I just feel like I'm going to have a lot of trouble finding parts for this thing. Don't see any leak on the hose here. And yeah, that don't... I don't really feel like it's building pressure at all. Let me go ahead and take this little E-clip off. We'll remove the piston and the seal here. Oh, yep. Got the clip right there. Like it got away from me. Up at the top, let's just pry this off. Yeah, I don't, I don't really feel no resistance worth mentioning there at all. So either it's a reed, like a reed issue or a seal issue. I would bet a seal issue. Just pull the bottom of the little check valve assembly off and I see our little check ball in there. Spring and seal looks, it looks good. It's at an angle here. Let's see if we can get the piston, yep. Get the piston right out of there. And Yeah, I mean it's dirty and it feels kind of hardened to me. Some of these seals are kind of high temp, but I still wouldn't think it'd be quite that hard. I think the temperature has gotten it. So this is not just 
the little ring or seal. It's also the reed built in. I'm going to clean this cylinder out as well. We'll be right back. So let's take a little bit closer look at this seal. You see how your intake reed is on the center of the piston here. And all that's clear. I mean, I'm going to clean it up, but it's nothing that will be causing an issue here that I can see. It's just a lot of grease and grime. Needs to be cleaned up for sure and tried again, but I don't think it's a... Uh, I don't think that's the main problem. I'm just going to clean it up and put some synthetic grease on here. Some old super lube. Give it the best opportunity we can. But I'm not I'm not feeling hopeful at this point. Just lubricate it again really well and just put the leftover in the gears in the cylinder so I can sling it all over my bench in a few minutes more than likely Let's snap this back on yeah, sometimes it's kind of hard. Sometimes you got to get pliers to help you push it on. I really can't, really can't tell a lot of difference here. Let me get the check ball. I clean this up a little bit and make sure it's got a little bit of lube on it. <laughs> check out the fan. Of course, no fan blades to be found, so you know somebody probably broke the fan playing around with it and at least they did take them out of the unit and discard them but we have no cooling fan that's not good let's put our check valve back together here with a little bit of lube on the seal spring feels good just going to check the hose make sure it's not obstructed but it don't sound like it's loading up like it's obstructed it just sounds like it's not building pressure Let's put it back together. I would think that would help just a little bit to be able to tell a difference if it is a seal issue. It might be temporary, but that lube would help just a little to at least probably get off a of zero. Let's screw the gauge back on here. Put the battery in. Let's see what it does. That actually did reach by over 5 PSI, so that, that was a little bit of a difference. Let's just take a quick look at the P731, maybe to make this video a little more interesting. Oh, and by the way, the, uh, the hidden screw on this one's on the more on the left side of the label instead of the center. We even see our um, our inflator blower's got its own housing instead of being built in. See our sensor on the board here. As we slide this out, we do see that it is made differently. Even though it's a lot of similarities, we see that the, the cylinder and the piston is different. I'm going to take the uh, piston out and show you here to save time on video, but that's the difference in them. And look at the reed on the bottom. It's got a little stainless steel reed for the intake instead of the little rubber seal. So those are different. One thing I'm going to try here just to show you if it makes it better or not. This is not a fix by any means. So please don't even comment that this wasn't a good fix. It's not meant to be a fix. I'm just simply showing here that if I do press the seal out on this piston, I just happen to have a 18650 battery cell holder. And I use my quick grip overnight to just put some pressure on the seal and flatten it out. Just to simply see if it will build pressure. We know that if this seal's hard and this is not a fix by any means. I still consider it more troubleshooting at this point myself. Just verifying that there isn't anything else going on. Now there's a little check ball. See how squishy it is? It's a little rubber check. It's actually clear looking. It's just got so much stain on it. 
just put our spring and seal back together and twist it and lock it back. I do have tape here, by the way, because I, I was a little bit concerned about how close this negative terminal was to the positive terminal um, when the battery is plugged up and the motor shifts around. So I just got that tape there temporarily. With everything in position, it should be fine, though. If I can just hold it without it moving. Keep fingers clear of any moving parts, of course. Let's see if it does any better. Definitely a noticeable difference. Let's see if the display shows any better. Hope you can see this on camera. Yep, so definitely a seal issue for sure. Now I have taken time to look all over the internet with no success in finding any kind of seal or even the whole piston replacement. And I do want to share with you if you can find any parts for these, look at the cost of these parts. So just sharing here that um, it is a shame that you, you just can't get parts to repair things anymore. And the things that you can get, prices are just astronomical. I mean, look at the price of the label and just simple things like the, the ball needle. That doesn't even make sense to be that expensive. They don't have a lot of parts listed for this anyway, but the ones that they do, like the labels and instructions and warnings and just the little fittings, it's ridiculous prices. So not gonna be easy to fix by any means. Hate to say it, but they just pretty much throw away when they have major mechanical issues. So just to share something else here on video with you, I went to Harbor Freight and just picked up this real cheap $8 uh, inflator. It's 150 PSI 12 volt portable inflator. And well, check this out. Do not use to inflate vehicle tires. But what the, what the heck would you use it for? I mean, that's what 90% of the people are gonna be using it for, right? It's a 12 volt, 150 PSI portable inflator. Plugs into a car 12 volt cigarette lighter power outlet. Anyway, I just want to show the difference here in these. Um, first of all, this gear, very tight. I mean, you can't expect much of eight bucks. But let's take it apart and look at it here. If you find it interesting, here's the little sleeve. Their reeds are the same principle, but they are designed differently. The little reeds on the top of the of the cylinder head. And we can see the check valves probably in that tube right there. The spring and check. And that's our little piston. And the seal is actually pretty good. I can see how that will build some pressure. Not much volume, but pressure. All these work on low volume and high pressure. I'm just going to take time to remove the motor and pump assembly out of the way and just show you the electronics real quick. At least make this a teardown video after all. And here we go, there's our MOSFETs that drive our motors. Here's our pressure sensor on the board that gives us our readout and PSI, our microcontroller, the header for it, looks like a voltage regulator, and some caps and other passive components here. And on the front side, we see we have our LCD. It's probably not much else there. And now back with a drill hooked to the back of the motor, the check ball just stuck in there. I don't I don't really feel a whole lot of pressure build here. Even that test with the seal short lived, it's not going to last long at all. But definitely not what I expect to be like a positive displacement. So well, this is not going to be a repair video. But I can see how you could take another pump like this one, for example. If you had an adapter here and a bar fitting, you actually could connect this to the sensor and connect the motor. And you, you could actually drive something similar to this. Not this exact one, but just something similar. Just thought I would share that. So this wasn't a repair today, guys. But so down in the video description, I'll have a link to some tools and interesting items that I find very helpful on my workbench. And any of those links you click on help support the channel. And I greatly appreciate it. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching. And God bless.